Um, before I came to the STP conference, it's my first time at the STP conference, and before I, I came here this morning, I probably only knew about half a dozen people who were in the room um, today, but immediately I walked in, it kind of feels like I'm among friends. I've met people from Middlesbrough, people from Hartlepool, which is where I grew up. I've met people from Stockton Sixth Form College, people who know my sister. You know, it's, it's amazing. I'm really, really delighted to be here. But in that spirit of being among friends then, and at risk of um, upsetting William by being unserious for a moment, I've got a few questions for people, and don't worry, I'm not going to ask for a raise of hands or anything like that. But th these are my questions. Can Doctor Who be a woman? Can the Little Mermaid be black? Can an Indian cartoon character be voiced by a white actor? Now, also being in the spirit of being among friends, I'll confess to you my honest reaction to all of those questions is to shrug. Do you know what? I couldn't care less. I mean, I'm really, really not bothered. But I'm going to use my 10 minutes now to convince you why the SDP should be at the forefront of fighting the culture wars. And it's got nothing to do with the answers to any of those questions. So first of all, you know, what, what do we mean by the culture wars? Because this, this phrase is bandied around a lot. And it's always done, I think, with a little bit of a sneer. You know, nobody wants to admit to being a culture warrior. And, and we're all, it's kind of considered a little bit dirty to be fighting culture wars. It's not something we should be doing. But I want to argue that, that we should be fighting culture wars. Because I think ultimately culture wars, you know, this, this is people who start these things off, they're obsessed with identity. They want to reduce us. They want to take away our individuality and reduce us to the most boring aspects of our lives, I think. You know, our, our sex, our gender identity, whatever that's supposed to mean, our skin color, our sexuality. You know, as I say, I think for me, those are the most boring parts of my life, and they're certainly not the sum total of who I am. But these identitarians, these culture warriors, they want to put us in these boxes based upon our identity. And I think we can't let them do that. Then they're obsessed with representation. They're obsessed in the most bean-counting mundane kind of way of counting how many black people are here, how many white people are over there, how many gay people, how many straight people, how many transgender people, as if this is what life is about, counting who's in which group and how many people and making sure there's equality. Again, it's boring, but it's worse than boring. It, it's destructive. It destroys tradition. It destroys our customs. It, it destroys our way of life. It distances us from our, our, ident our, our, our kind of tradition, our values, our, our customs. And I think the aim is, is deliberately to do that. It's deliberately intended to have this destructive, negative effect. Because it seems to me that the aim of a culture wars is to, to erase the past, to erase tradition, and really to create a kind of year zero. And you've got to ask, in whose interests is it? You know, who wants to create a year zero? Why do they want to create a year zero? And it seems to me that the only people who stand to gain from doing this are people who want to impose a new set of beliefs, who want the cultural elite, who want to impose their woke values on society without us being able to question or remember the past or have traditions or customs or beliefs of our own to be able to refer to, to challenge these ideas. So whilst the examples I kicked off with at the beginning, the questions I asked, I think are frankly ridiculous, when you read about the culture wars in the papers, those are the types of questions that people always come up with. They say, oh, you know, this is what the culture wars are about. Well, I think it's not. I think the culture wars are not about those silly questions. I think the culture wars are far more serious than that, because whilst we're laughing 
at those questions and, and the stupidity of people who are going to get worked up about those issues. Meanwhile, we've got our teachers, our social workers, our nurses being trained up in universities to be obsessed about skin colour. Why should nurses need to know about critical race theory? Why should nurses be being taught that whiteness um, is, is a pathology, that, that whiteness is a problem, that, that either there's a problem of white superiority um, or, or you know, that, that, that black people are inherently victims of structural racism? Nurses need to know how to look after sick people. They need to know how to take temperatures and blood pressure and care for people who are ill. They don't need to see, first and foremost, skin colour. They need to, first and foremost, see what's wrong with people and be able to put it right. What... Whilst we're worrying about or, or laughing about people who get worked up over whether Doctor Who can be a man or a woman, or you know, it's a time-traveling fictional character, you know, this is ridiculous. But whilst we're laughing about that and getting distracted about that, meanwhile our teachers are being taught that when they go into the classroom, they should be declaring their pronouns. You know, they should be telling children that sex is something that's randomly assigned at birth and what they've got to do is work out what their gender identity is. And if they like playing football and playing with diggers, and even if you're a girl, you're probably actually a boy. And, um, you know, if you like wearing a dress and doing ballet dancing, then actually maybe you're a girl. Um, and the, these things really, really matter. And to me, that's what the culture wars is about. It's not about, you know, who can play Doctor Who and what colour the Little Mermaid is. It's these really important things. And you can tell that these things are serious because when you challenge them, when you push back against them, that's when you get told to shut up. That's when you risk losing your job. That's when you risk being cancelled. But again, you have to think about what's the impact of, of the culture warriors winning. What's the impact if we don't stand up to these things? Because one of the key projects, I think, of the culture wars is a bid to change language, to question the words that we use, to replace the language that we're familiar with, with a new alien language. So I, I tell you now, I will never, ever declare myself to be a cis woman. I'm not a cis woman. I mean, what does this word... You know, th these are ridiculous, made-up words that we're having kind of imposed upon us. These are, are made-up words that we're supposed to be using to explain society. But you can see why they want to impose these words upon us, because you change the language, you change the vocabulary, and ultimately you end up changing how people think. You end up controlling the way we can talk to each other. You end up controlling what it's actually possible for us to think about. Remove statues, and you actually destroy our connection to the past. And that's the good and the bad things about the past. I'm not trying to say everything was brilliant in the past and we should just worship it. But remove statues and that link to our past, the good things and the bad things about our past goes away. You distance us, you alienate us from our own past when you take statues away. Attack the nation state, which is again, I think another really key goal of the culture was, attack the nation state and what you do is you take away the one thing that unites everyone who lives in this country, irrespective of their sex, again, their skin color, their sexuality. The nation state's the one thing that really has the capacity to unite the entire population. And that's why they want to destroy it. That's why they want us to stop having a, a love of the nation, because they want to take away that unifying thing that, that unites us, they prefer us. It's easier to manage a population that's divided into these neat identity boxes. Um, so the culture wars, you know, this is not an abstract, theoretical kind of academic game. This has real consequences. And I think one of the things that concerns me most is the way it breaks intergenerational bonds. 
change the language, introduce new trendy words, destroy statues, take away our connections to the past, remove children's literature, introduce um, kind of new obsessions into children. You know, I was in Waterstones in Leeds, so it's just a little aside, in Waterstones in Leeds just yesterday, and you go into the children's book section, the young adult book section, and Every single book seems to be some kind of political manifesto, some kind of political treatise, all dressed up in brightly colored covers, but they're all promoting some kind of critical race theory agenda or, or kind of ideas about gender ideology. And you think, my goodness me, can't children just enjoy having children's books anymore, just enjoy having nice stories? But when you remove the stories, <laughs> Remove the stories that were familiar to us from our childhood, introduce these new political treaties as examples of children's literature, and you break that bond between the generations. Suddenly, grandparents are not reading to their grandchildren their old favorite books. They've got these new alien books to read, and it's alienating, and it distances the generations from one another. And this is why I think, actually, the, the issue of gender is so important of sex is so important because they go on about gender identity as if this is this just this kind of feeling inside you and this is way more important um, than anything to do with your biology but sex isn't just a biological reality although you know first and foremost it is a biological reality that should not even need stating but it also has historical significance as well it, it is about how you find out your role in the world and that doesn't mean to say you know you we should have fixed, rigid um, stereotypes for what men should do and what women should do, but it, it kind of shows you how you fit into society. Personally, you know, I'm proud to be a woman, and I'm aware of the history of women, and I'm aware of the history of women in politics and how women have led up to and kind of had an impact on society, and I'm really proud to be part of that. And if you tell me that, that my sex counts for nothing, it's just a gender identity, it's telling me that I shouldn't be part of that proud tradition of how women have helped to change the way the world is and make it what it is today. Um, so I think the key point I really want to make today is that too many people rush to tell us that the culture wars is a distraction from politics, that if we're really bothered about politics, you know, you've just got to focus on things like the economy. I mean, yeah, as William pointed out, all the ways they're making a mess of that. But, you know, real politics is over here and the culture wars is over there. Well, I mean, I think the main thing I want to say is that I don't think that's true. I actually think the culture wars is the way that politics plays out today. Day because the culture wars is first and foremost, I think, an attack on the working class. It's an attack on working class people, working class way of life, working class culture. And more than that... <laughs> More, more than that, I think it's an attack on everybody because it's an attack on free speech. It's an attack on freedom of conscience. It's an attack on freedom of belief. And it's an attack on individual agency. It's an attack on our own ability to decide this is how I want to live my life. And, and that is what the culture was, is, is, atta is attacking. So why should we fight? Why do I think that the SDP should absolutely be in the trenches fighting the culture wars? Because the culture warriors, you know, I think their number one masterstroke is that they deny any such fight is taking place. How can you spot you're in the presence of a culture warrior? Well, it's the opposite to the joke about vegans. They don't tell you. <laughs> in fact... <laughs> In fact, what they do is they say, oh, no, there isn't a culture war. Oh, no, they say, you're the one who's fighting a culture war as soon as you start to push back. And they deny that what they are doing has got anything to do with the culture war at all. And it's a really devious slate of hand and we can't let them get away with that. Now I think the reason why I'm here today and the reason why I'm proud to be associated with the SDP is because I think standing for tradition, family, nation, 
community. Those are all things that we should be really proud to be associated with. And when culture warriors come along and tell us that we need to question these things, we need to, that these things are racist or sexist or homophobic or transphobic, and we shouldn't be associated with those things, we need to push back. They will try and tell us that these values, nation, community, family, that they're regressive, that they're racist, and we, we, we need to tell them that actually no, you know, enough is enough. We can't let them get away with this. It can't go on like this. You know, these are not backward values. These are actually progressive values because this is the basis of building a new, forward-looking, progressive society. And I don't believe any other party today can do this, certainly not the Conservative Party, who doesn't seem to know what it stands for anymore, certainly not the Labour Party, who's actually busy lobbing grenades into the culture wars. I think the SDP is the only party that can do this, and that's why I'm really happy to be here today.